Form Next 2022, I'm at the 3D Serum booth with my friend Sid. Hi, I'm Sid. And I'm the managing director of 3D Serum Tivari. We are part of the 3D Serum group of companies, and 3D Serum is one of the market leaders of in the in the top in the field of 3D printing of technical ceramics. Technical ceramics. Yeah. And that's kind of fun. We, I, I feel like I want to put a coming soon because we get to talk about all of that at a, at a future date. I'm told. But right behind me and behind you is this, and I heard this is the new thing, and we get to talk about it. The MAT. Exactly. You must have heard a lot about. 3D printing or FFF with thermoplastics, right? I've, I've heard once a, a few things here and there. Yeah. PLA, ABS, PC, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the typical topics. I'm hip to all the materials. Yeah. But did you know that it's also possible to do FFF of silicon carbide, alumina, zirconia? What? That's what has happened in the last couple of years. Okay. We have actually taken steps towards starting from plastics to going towards technical ceramics. Okay, okay, so you are, you are extruding something that contains the technical ceramics, it does it create a green part that is then baked away? Yeah, it seems you know very well about this topic. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Okay. So you're using modified optimized FFF printers for the ceramic or metal filaments, and you produce these green parts, which are then subsequently debinded and sintered to get a pure metal or ceramic part. You said modified FFF printers. Yeah. Are, now, I would assume with this MAT here, this is one of those modified FFF printers. Is that correct? Yeah. MAT is the next generation of printer or a multi-additive technology to not just do printing, but also a number of other steps. Number one, it's an FFF printer, which is made specifically for ceramic or metal filaments. So ceramic or metal filaments, they are unlike your thermoplastic filaments. They are much more brittle and the printing temperature is much lower. So you really have to be careful the way you extrude it, the way you, let's say, print your printing strategy to make sure that the stresses in the parts are very low. So that's what it does, the printer. It prints reliably. It's suitable for short as well as long prints. Now, you, you mentioned something very interesting, and this is something I don't know. You mentioned, well, okay, brittle, the, these type of, um, Materials are brittle, which I, I get because I have played with some uh, materials that have additives that do make them a little bit brittle, but lower temperature. Now, when we're talking, because you mentioned all the materials at the beginning, like peel and ABS, and everybody, most people out there have a really good idea of, of the temperature ranges that those materials take for 3D printing. So then, what does a modified machine print at? What temperatures are we talking about? We're talking about temperatures close to anything between 130 to 160, 170. Oh, well below the melting absolutely, point of yeah, these. Absolutely. Oh, oh, and oh, this makes a lot of sense because the, the bits inside this filament, you're not trying to melt those, you're just having to, to melt the carrier, the, the, the binder, to put it into a shape, right? Exactly, I mean, you're mel melting the thermoplastic, but it's not your typical thermoplastic, it's not a okay. PLA, it's not an ABS because the thermoplastic has to be chosen carefully so that you can print, but you can also very carefully debind and sinter. At the same time, you want them to not react adversely with the metal or ceramic particles. So it's not just the any, any PLA filament, you mix it with metal or ceramic powders, but you carefully need to choose the right binder, which allows you very good shaping, but at the same time can be debound very efficiently. I know that there are machines that you can modify firmware so that uh, you, you don't have a, you have a lower minimum temperature so you can approach that. But I would imagine there are other considerations that you need in order to accurately print these parts. Is that right? Absolutely. The, the lot of the extruder parts are cooled you know, to, make, to make sure there is no softening of the filament before the shaping process or the melting process starts. It's done in such a way that it's very, let's say, sensitive to the filament. It's not really pushing it very hard down. Re so it, it's, it's a little bit different to huh. how you do with thermoplastics. This is fascinating, by the way, yeah. because normally with a rigid material, even, even materials that are brittle, it's, it's an extrusion process and you're just forcing it through, but it's actually it's not. Carefully pushing it's it through. carefully pushing, pushing it, it through. through. Yeah, and at the right places, at the right point, at the right temperature, in different locations. And when you have mastered this, that's when you get a reliable print that's suitable for, as I said, small, as well as large parts. So you have some really larger parts that you see, 12 centimeters in size, yeah? Oh, may I? Yeah. 
gyroid infill is the best infill. It's the best looking and also the best performing one of the one of the better ones. That's right. It does have mechanical properties, it has doesn't it? It's just not not just for the optical sense, but also in terms of performance. It's very good and gives one of the higher strengths when you compare it to other infills. So what am I looking at here? What material is this? You're looking at silicon carbide. Silicon carbide? Yeah, yeah. So silicon carbide is, we call it in German, it's called Schwarz Keramik. Schwarz Keramik. Keramik. Ke like ceramic. Keramik. 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 Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a dark ceramic. I tried. I really tried. It's a dark ceramic and it's not easy to process with laser or light-based systems, you know? Oh, so if, when we talk about like powder bed machines, those can't easily use this material. So powder bed, not necessarily, because let's say when you talk about laser powder bed fusion, they, they cannot really process ceramics very well. Okay. Yeah. So typically ceramics are done with, um, let's say, stereolithography or DLP, digital ah, light processing. Okay, I see. Yeah, or other similar processes. And there you have the issue that optical properties of the material play a key role in how good a result you get. And as soon as you have something dark colored, it tends to absorb more of the light than the binder itself. So you are oh. not able to actually get a very dense green part. No? So there, FFF is really helpful because it's really independent of the optical properties of the oh, material. It's right. just a simple extrusion. So a careful extrusion. Simple, careful <laughs> extrusion, as you said. So the color really is not playing a role. So if the color is orange, or white or black, you know, so we have a number of samples. So you have samples that are white. That feels like a ceramic yeah, part. Yeah, and if you look at this part, for example, if you look in the light, you can actually see the very, very nice infill patterns because it's slightly translucent. Oh it's, yeah, it is, just slightly, Yeah, just slightly. Yeah. These were printed with FFF technology and then being a green part, so uh, debindered. De 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 debound? Debound de 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 or debinded. Okay. And then subsequently and then, sintered. And then sintered. So yeah. there is shrinkage. Uh, absolutely. But it's calculated, right? It's a consistent. Absolutely. You, uh, can, you can actually calculate in such a way that you get precisions of 150, 200 microns in each axis. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Would well, you know what the shrinkage is on this? Uh, roughly, I would say 20% in each direction. Oh, 20%. Uh, so Absolutely. it's it is a significant amount. Absolutely, it's about 50% in volume. So now this is the MAT. This is I, I would assume this is a new machine. Is that correct? Absolutely. It does have a very familiar look to it. Is this uh, a Core XY machine? Absolutely. And it looks like it is running RepRep firmware. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So here on, on my show, what we do when we talk about these sort of printers, there's a certain spec list we run down. So can we do that real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, so do you know what the X, Y, and Z dimensions are? 20 centimeters in each direction, X, Y, Z. Okay. Yeah? So that's typically the sizes that you would manufacture with ceramics with an FFF machine. Because what happens is that when you try to go to larger dimensions, it gets exponentially difficult. Oh, because you have to shrink it. That's so right. If you don't actually use the right strategies, or if you have a part which is really big, it shrinks, but at the same time, it will not be uniform. When we talk about a part that has to be built to spec, it's imperative that it is uniform. Absolutely. So imagine you know, a round object. If you don't carefully do the sintering, then you have an oval object. It's not round <laughs> That's anymore. That's right. Yeah? So 20 centimeters on X, Y, and Z. It's direct drive. Absolutely. It looks like you're running, what size nozzle on it? Right now, 0 0.4 nozzle. 0 0.4, yeah. but others can, you can do others like... You can 0, do 0 0.8, 0.6, for example. 0.8. This part was printed with 0 0.6, roughly okay. one and a half, two hours. So the typical things that we associate with FFF-style 3D printers, such as the motion system, the nozzle size, and all that, it still plays a part when we're dealing with the technical Absolutely. materials. You can actually, you can use a lot of the knowledge that you already have from plastics, transfer to ceramics. However, the catch is not everything is the same. Okay. A lot of the designs are not the same. Design guidelines are different. The way you print the parts, the printing strategy, is also very important, no? especially the way you print perimeters, the direction of the infills, mm -hmm. because if you have a bias in, to, in the way you print the perimeters and the infills, then you have, let's say, a, a non-isotropic shrinkage. Right, if it doesn't shrink in a consistent way, yeah. then you it's no your, longer a valid part. Absolutely, you want your perimeters and infills to be printed in yeah. such a way that there is no bias towards shrinkage in any direction. So that's the catch. It's Yeah, you can use a lot of the info that you have at FFF with plastics, but be careful. There is a lot yet to be learned and that you need to learn before you really start producing very nice parts. Well, I think this is a great place to wrap it up because this has been fascinating. A lot of this information I thought, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought I knew, 
but I didn't. And you got to tell me all sorts of really cool stuff that augmented my, my knowledge of FFF machines. And now just knowing how this is carefully extruded and how isotropic properties come into play, yeah. this is awesome. So yeah. if people want to find out more about 3D Serum or the MAT, where could they go? Could you let them know? They can go to our website, uh, www.3dceram.com. You can also follow our LinkedIn pages and you can learn more about MAT. And keep in mind, the MAT is not just a machine that can do FFF, it's a machine that can also mill the green parts. So you get really nice surface finish, really nice tolerances, and you can also do robo casting. So we have three processes in one machine, and that's why it's also called multi additive technology. It's not just FFF. Thank you for your time, and it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. We'll put links down in the description. Sid, thanks, man. Have a good rest of form yeah. next. Thank you.